we resist in our music. We are the revolution. It's rebirthing the Palestinian community again. We can do it! We wanted to go home. Welcome to Leeds Palestinian Film Festival 2020. We're excited to be hosting the whole festival online for the first time this year. Leeds Palestinian Film Festival is a volunteer run and not for profit, and any profits we do make is always donated. This year, in light of, of the COVID-19 crisis, we have chosen to make a donation to medical aid for Palestinians who are doing fantastic work for the health and dignity of Palestinians living under occupation and as refugees. Just to introduce myself, I'm Katriona. I'm a freelance programmer and marketer for various cinemas and film festivals across the UK. Currently, I'm the program and marketing director of Screen 25, a community cinema in South London, and social media manager of Leeds Palestinian Film Festival. So this year's festival includes an in-focus strand on one of the most important voices of Palestinian cinema today, filmmaker Anne-Marie Jasser. Um, Anne-Marie was one of the founders of Philistine Films, an independent production company with offices in both Palestine and Jordan, which was created to support new voices and to offer a platform for the emerging independent Arab film scene. In 2018, she served on the jury of the Cannes Film Festival and in 2020 on the main competition jury at the Berlin International Film Festival. And her two most recent films, Wajib and When I Saw You, are available to watch at Leeds Palestinian Film Festival this year. So thank you so much, Anne-Marie, for joining us. Thank you, Kat, and I'm, I'm really happy to, to be able to somehow participate in, in the festival and, uh, you know, not physically, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, to be able to have this conversation and, and uh, congratulations for all the work that you're doing there in, in, in Leeds and, and also with supporting MAP, which is such a great organization, such an important one. Thank you so much. Um, just to ask, where are you joining us from today? I'm, I'm in Palestine. I'm, I'm here in Palestine in, in lockdown number two. <laughs> number second, two. second period. <laughs> yeah, season two. <laughs> yeah, season two, exactly. Um, so I guess we could just jump straight into the question. So um, we're showing your films, Wajib and When I Saw You. Both films I personally found, um, they take a very nuanced approach to telling stories of Palestinians living under occupation. Um, why do you think it's important for audiences to see this side of Palestine? Um, I think it's important for audiences to see any side of Palestine. Um, and, you know, all of, all of Palestine's many dimensions, um, you know, the, you know, we've been so left out of, of you know, the, the story and, and, the, and Palestinian voices are so rarely heard. Um, you know, throughout the decades, uh, I don't. Sometimes I feel like these days it's it's a little bit better, and sometimes I feel like we've gone, you know, backwards. But in in any case, um, you know, in 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 mainstream voices, you know, in in the mainstream media, in in cinema, in whatever out there in the world, I think Palestinian voices are 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 few and far between. So I I think it's why these kinds of festivals are. Are super important because it's it's an address for people to to be able to see something and hear something that they may not normally get the chance to not just because you know we're palestinians but also because in general you know not in general for sure palestinian film is independent cinema and independent cinema really struggles um to make it in this world and and to make it out there 
Amazing, yeah, of course. Um, and just to kind of dive deeper into the films, we had um, one of our volunteers, Lizzie, wrote um, a really fantastic article about um, Wow Shiv and When I Saw You. Um, and it kind of linked the two through the theme of parent-child relationships. Um, and I think you do this so well, um, you know, in, in using this to kind of explore things like the awkwardness between a parent and child and like the lack of communication and obviously different opinions and wanting different things. Um, so what kind of drives you to portray this on screen, do you think? Yeah, it's interesting. I um, I, I, I like to read <laughs> the article because I, I think a lot of, of what an artist does is, is you know, subconscious. Um, you know, I, I wrote... Um, I wrote when I saw you before I was a mother, before I had a child, um, you know, and, and I, and Wajib I wrote after, after that. Um, but I'm, you know, Wajib is a father and son relationship, you know, neither of which I am. Um, for me, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, in case you didn't know, um, <laughs> but for me, it's really about, um, you know, family. I think I'm very affected and 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 uh, by family relationships um, and all that. As you said, all that awkwardness, all of the that gray area, all of all of all of that stuff that moves us and and pushes us. Uh, I guess uh, it is there. It is there in the work, and it's it's not something I set out to do intentionally. But I I, I think it is part of what. What interests me is is really you know relationships between between people and our act our you know our actual families and the families that we we find. Mm, yeah, amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's it's almost like I love the kind of um, the the dynamic of in when I saw you when you have. Um, all these different people around the campfire, all who, I mean, they're not all Palestinian, they're, you know, Jordanian, they're, there's the Algerian as well, you know, and I think especially it's set in 1967. So I think the Algerian independence was, um, was in 1964, I believe. And so it's almost like you've kind of picked up on these little, not little, but just you've, cut, you've brought the whole of the Arab world into this one story It's just kind of almost a way of uniting. That, sorry, it's just me reading into it. Um, but that kind of leads me on to my next question, which is, um, so there's so many kind of remarkable methods of storytelling coming from the Palestinian region right now. Um, and it really feels like the stories that are standing out and resonating the most are from women filmmakers. So like yourself, of course, um, but there's also kind of Shireen Dabis's um, Amrika, which I think came out in 2009. Um, and more recently, Larissa Sansor's um, experimental film In Vitro. So there's, it's kind of, it's very prominent. So why is it, do you think, an industry, like the film industry generally, that so typically favours men historically, as we know, um, why do you think it's seen such a prominent emergence of women taking the helm when it comes to Arab cinema in particular? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. And I think there are two reasons for that. I mean, I think that, Traditionally, you know, Arab women are, and you know, especially in Palestine, are very much at the forefront of a lot of things. I mean, in the workplace. I mean, you know, it's 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 a society that uh, you know, not to say there's no patriarchy in the world and in Palestine. There certainly is, and we're going to smash the patriarchy. <laughs> but really, I mean, also, I mean, I think Palestinian women are involved um, in all aspects of, of society and in many cases are the breadwinners in their homes um, and then I you know I think um, I mean in my family personally women are very much you know they're running the show uh, um, I think in independent cinema in general all over the world um, because women have been left out of, you know, main, you know, the mainstream cinema places where there's an old cinema industry that left women out. We didn't really have to deal with that. We didn't have to deal with fighting our way in because in our part of the world or in, you know, in, in places where independent cinema is, is the main cinema, 
we all committed as equals. We've all been able to, we didn't have to deal with feeling, feeling left out because we've all built it together and we've all come towards it, you know, together. And I, I think that's really the main, the really the main reason, because I, I think that in all countries in which they, you know, there, there isn't something that was already set up historically that women were left out of, you see that women are more involved in those, in that, if it's, if it's is it filmmaking or something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And it's it's so interesting you mentioned like, yeah, there's unity in that way, um, because we had an audience question that you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but it, I thought it was very kind of relevant um, and of the time. Um, so what will a Biden presidency mean for Palestinian arts and cinema? <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> It's an apt question. I mean, here, here, here we are, you know, again, as Palestinians, you know, something really great has happened, which is that Trump was defeated. I mean, this is, you know, a celebration, you know, for us. I mean, he's done so much damage to so many people and so many people's lives, you know, as, as crazy as he is, as stupid as he is, that, you know, and he, he's had a real harmful effect on, on people and their lives. So it's a celebration that he's out. And at the same time, you know, all of our celebrations have this, you know, Biden, Biden, you know, what's he going to do for Palestine? So far, what he said, his track record is not promising. It doesn't give us a lot of hope, you know. I mean, you know, as Palestinians, we, we've, we've yet to see, you know, anybody in the American administration at that level come out and really be supportive for human rights, really be supportive for Palestinian rights, you know, to, to, to end an occupation. I mean, America always stands alone, actually, in, in, in that way. So America, the American administration has never been a friend to the Palestinians, but we, we, we keep hoping, right? That's what we do. We, we, we hope and we, we work towards, you know, something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um... And I guess my final question is, um, I think everyone will be mad at me for not asking you. So, <laughs> um, but finally, I'm not sure how much you can talk about it, but we understand you're currently working on your next film. Um, if it's not too cheeky to ask, could you tell us a little bit about it or even what stage you're at? Well, I'm at the very early, early stages. So it's hard for me to talk about something at an early stage because not not even because I don't want to but because it's difficult because I'm still you know grappling with it um so it's mm -hmm. it's also a period film like uh, like when I saw you is um I'm interested in in maybe I can say that but about it I'm always interested in the way um you know, dealing with, with the past and dealing with, with, you know, our history, but not in a nostalgic way, you know, not in a, in a way that, you know, misses something, but in a way, in actually in a way that it's totally relevant to today and what's happening today. That I think for me is, is the main thing. And in the way that when I saw you was that this one also is, is similar to that. Um, so I'm still right. I'm writing, um, looking for money, you know, that, that process, which always takes <laughs> forever, but that's, that's, that's the main thing. But I liked what you said about when I saw you earlier too. I mean, the, the, you know, about that, that family, we find that community that, you know, Palestinians, that's what, and when I saw you, I mean, you know, the, the, the rest of the Arab world. I mean, it was also about a period where we were much more connected um, to other people, other struggles, you know, anti-colonialism, um, you know, student movements across the world, the anti-war movement across the world, all of that at that period was all hand in hand. And there was a lot of solidarity between, you know, all those, those groups. And today we find ourselves, you know, more and more isolated feeling more and more isolated and being more and more cut off. And that physically represents itself in the terms of, you know, the checkpoints and the, you know, the apartheid wall, but invisibly also in terms of, you know, being able to travel, being able to move and, you know, any kind of freedom of movement. I, I think, uh, so for me, cinema is always trying to, my cinema and what, you know, I like is trying to 
refuse all that and break out of that. You know, if we're physically stuck, we find another way to, to, to get out there. And, and it's, it's a, it's a, you know, that, that's why I like to make films. There's a freedom in it. And, and I, and I look for freedom in, in my stories and in my characters, even if, you know, it's not, it could be, you know, freedom is defined in so many different ways um, for people. And sometimes it's extremely personal. Yeah, I think a, like a massive emerging theme of the festival this year is a lot of people saying that it's um, cinema is almost like a weapon of resilience in a way. And that's kind of the way that filmmakers like yourself are kind of beautifully, if I can, if, if you don't mind me saying beautifully, just kind of telling these these stories and, you know, I think really affecting audiences in a way that's that's humanizing and I think very important. But yeah. yeah. No, thank you so yeah. much. Well, thank for... you for the comment. Beautiful. But yeah, I mean that's what it is, right? It's being able to talk to you to to reach out to somebody that I mean I guess I've discovered that also in you know in making films and traveling with my films is meeting audience. That meeting the audience it's, it's it's one of the best things because you know, these are very specific stories um from Palestine, Palestinian stories and Yet, I mean, what is behind it is that, you know, somebody can relate to it, that, you know, our struggle, I really believe, you know, we're, we, we really, our struggles are all, you know, one. And, uh, you know, I think somebody who's had no experience with Palestine may not understand all the details, maybe of, like if they watch Wajib, they might not get all the nuances. But I, but I, but I hope that there's something underneath that, that, you know, that's the connection that, you know, we all have to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Anne Marie, for, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you, and hope we're we're all together one day soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So good luck.